Let's talk about two different concepts in this video. The first one is forums, specifically online forum. Now, the word forum actually comes from ancient Greece. In Greece, the forum was an actual location in the central city of Athens, which was the capital, if you will, of Greece. The forum was a place where the public and the administrators and government could actually join together and have discussions. They would communicate back and forth. The forum was also where formal meetings just of government occurred. So a forum is a place for conversations to happen. And that's what it is today. On the internet, a forum is an online discussion location. It's really just a specialized website. And we talked a little bit about this in an earlier video when I referred to an idea of what's called a chat room. A chat room is a form of, an, of a forum. It's an online discussion location. It's just a website that has a specialized function. And the function is, let, someone, let users in, multiple users at once, and provide a way for them to see a real-time stream of written messages from each other. It could be like this. At the top would be the most recent message. And below that, the most you know, prior and prior and prior and prior. That's just one way to arrange it. You can flip it around, it doesn't matter. The point is, you could have you know, 50 different people logged into this thing. Half of them might not be typing anything. They might be just following a discussion that goes back and forth and bounces around in you know, subject and they're just following the, following the action, if you will. And the other half of them might actually be actively commenting and two or three of them might be having their own conversation, but it's all just one comment after the other and it could be hard to follow or not hard to follow based on how many different people are putting out how many different communications. It can be really noisy or really quiet, but it's just a place where people can talk, except they're talking at a distance using their computers logged into a website that's called a forum. Now, what would they talk about? Well, that's where you get the concept of a forum being dedicated in subject or scope. And that's usually the case. How many people are going to get together and say, well, we got people from every different demographic in the world. And nobody even has a subject to talk about. So just start. No, you're going to have something like, well, we're BMX riders. We like those BMX bikes and, you know, jumping over hills and everything. We know all the, you know, we got people that do that after school or, or you know, they're you know, professionals at it and they want to talk about all the different gear and where the best places are to race. And well, let's go to an online forum for BMX enthusiasts. And lo and behold, you find out there's hundreds of people that are like you and like the same thing you like. And you have conversations about the new bike that's coming out and it would be a dedicated subject that that forum would relate to. And you will find forums all over the internet with, well, how many things are people interested in? Millions of different things. But that's really what a forum is, just an online talking place. And again, the, the form of the forum is quite basic. Just allow people to log in, have a steady stream of conversations about a subject, and maybe provide some statistics to the people that are logged in. How many people are logged in and how many of them are actively commenting? And what if there are people that are like, you know, administrators of this forum? You know, I've got three administrators logged in right now and here's their names. So if someone over here is saying something really rude, like I can't stand the new Schwinn and you're an idiot because you want to ride the Schwinn and this forum says, don't call anybody an idiot, then you can go, hey, Mr. Administrator over here, you know, Bobby Two Socks over here said I was an idiot for trying to ride a Schwinn and it's a community. It's what a forum is for. It's a community. And each community is run by whoever wants to run it. And they have the rules they want to have. And you become part of the community. If you want to stay there and communicate, you do. If not, you just don't go back to that forum. That's a forum. Now let's talk about a wiki. It's a cute name. Makes me think of Star Wars. A wiki is a website with content on the website that can actually be created and modified collaboratively. That's a nice little why, you like that? In other words, it isn't just created by one person or a few different people. Many different people can add content, can change content, can delete content. Many of you know, probably heard of the most popular wiki there is in the world, it's called Wikipedia. Wikipedia is an online encyclopedia a repository of knowledge that can be created and modified collaboratively. Many of you may not have known that. The data you see on Wikipedia is user generated and user modified. 
one can sign up to be an editor on Wikipedia. And if approved, you can actually go in and propose edits to different content and say, this doesn't belong here, and here's a picture of so-and-so, and you're wrong about this date. It was 1978. And, blah. and this data is essentially crowdsourced, if you will. It's a collaborative effort to create and modify content. Again, Wikipedia is just one example of the concept of a wiki, simply a website with content that can be created and modified collaboratively. It's not the only one, by far. Another example is wikis have been created for very, very popular media properties, things like Star Wars and Star Trek. There exist medias on the internet that have countless hundreds or thousands of articles on them all about Star Wars, and they are maintained by Star Wars enthusiasts through a collaborative effort. Anybody who registers and is approved as an editor or modifier on that Star Wars wiki can make changes to the content on that wiki. Now, this introduces a very interesting thing. It's group consensus and agreement that actually ends up being the final form of the content. Because if you go in and you make a change, let's say on Wikipedia to some article, and you happen to think that the person that won the BMX race won it in 1978, but another guy says, you know what? I was there. When Ricky won that, it was 1979. I happen to know that. I'm going to go in and change it. And then 150 other people come in and say, uh, sorry, you're wrong. It really was 1978. And they continually change it. Eventually, the administrators of Wikipedia will go, you know what, buddy? You're on a one-man crusade. No one else agrees with you. We're sticking with 1978. Knock it off. And at that point in time, that has become the official article about that BMX racer on Wikipedia. And it's a constantly shifting thing. In fact, if you were to track something like Wikipedia, you'd see that the content of you know, popular articles on Wikipedia changes constantly. So, let's step back to the basic concept again. A wiki is a website with a specialized purpose, and that purpose is to provide a platform for publishing content. And the unique aspect of how that website works is that that content can be created, modified, and removed collaboratively by anyone who's authorized to do so. Wikis are also used very often in corporations. Corporations, companies, assemble very often a large store of data that's just unique to that exact environment and very valuable. Let's say you're going to bring someone new into the company and there's a lot of history of the company, the way things are operated and that sort of thing that you want to host in a place that anybody in the company can collaborate and add data to. You could host that on a wiki. You can have a little website just for your company, only accessible to the employees of your company that hosts valuable data in a wiki format about your company. And again, anybody in your company who is authorized to create, modify, or delete that data will be allowed to do so. One final aspect of this to cover, just again, in terms of using common sense, is, and it should be obvious by now, because anybody who gets access to this and is allowed to edit it can edit it, well, it opens up the door to incorrect information actually being published on the wiki. Now, if it's your small little wiki just for your company and there's 20 employees and someone says, hey, you know, the puts on the wiki that, you know, the annual Christmas party is, you know, two days before Christmas, it ends up being one day before Christmas and everybody's upset, you know, minor impact. If, however, the article is on Wikipedia, which has a reach of, oh, I don't know, about a billion people or more worldwide, probably a lot more than that, and it's about an important element of society, and it contains false data, well, many people rely upon Wikipedia as a source of information, and that false or incorrect data can spread out into society pretty quickly. So there are benefits, to be sure, with, Wikip with wikis and with Wikipedia in in specifically, but because of its nature and the fact that it is a collaborative group endeavor, incorrect or false data can actually be spread through a wiki. It's just something to keep in mind as you create these, modify them, which you well will do at some point as a software developer, it's very likely. And of course, as you use them, bear in mind that they're collaborative endeavors and you cannot always trust what's on them.